How many essays have you written that felt like a complete drag? How many times have you stared at a blinking cursor just to have no words written down? And whenever you start deciding to craft your argument, how many times have you deleted the full paragraph after you have written it down? Well, I've definitely been there and during my time as a student and now a PhD student, these issues don't go away and if not tackled adequately, they definitely make your time as a student a lot harder. So so I have developed a sort of writing method that works really well for me and I definitely want to emphasize that this is my writing method. So the first thing I do whenever I have a writing project that I have to do for my research is I do a big brain dump and this brain dump is usually through the entire research project of any type of paper that I'm writing. So for a PhD project these are usually quite long so I research any question between six months and one year and during this process I actually gather a lot of results or evidence for my question and I usually put them all into one big word document and for me this document is very unstructured so I usually have the pictures together and maybe some of the writing that I've done and usually some of the considerations that I make but this document for me is really like a lab notebook I would almost say so any type of change I make during the experiment I put in this big document and I try not to edit this document too much as I'm writing it and that's because I find when you start editing yourself you're almost changing the narrative or the results you find so I try to keep it as pure in some sense as possible and usually for each specific scientific question I have one such document and these documents can range anywhere between 50 and 100 pages so they're definitely very long but I think if you're creating a writing project for your masters for example or your bachelors which are a lot shorter you can kind of see these documents as your free thinking space in which you actually just try to gather evidence for your argument and this evidence can come both from scientific work or from experiments that you do and from papers that you read and usually all of the results that I have gathered in this one big document I've already shown to some colleagues and to my professors such that I can see how the argument lands with them and if the results are adequate enough to start writing a paper. Aside from creating this massive document or this ma massive lab notebook I usually also gather papers through my researching projects and these papers I put all in Zotero so Zotero is one of the reference managers but there are a few there's also Mendeley and paper like and I think all of them are fine you just have to pick one and kind of stick with one so in Zotero for every big research project I have one folder in which I put all my papers and usually throughout my research project for a paper I gather between like 50 to 100 papers for a normal research project and if I'm writing a review it can definitely be beyond 150 pages because reviews are very long and tedious to write and then with these two documents or with the folder in Zotero and with my big lab notebook I'm all set up to start writing or crafting my argument for a paper or to start writing up my results and I find the more time I spend on researching the easier it is to write down the paper so for the second part of of writing a paper this usually takes the longest in the actual writing process and that's to create a narrative or to create some kind of skeleton for your argument and if you're unsure about how to create a convincing argument or a convincing narrative I definitely think it's a good idea to have a few examples so usually as I'm writing something I have about five to ten examples of arguments or papers that I liked to read and that I found myself quite convincing and when when you follow these papers you can kind of see how they crafted their argument but I find following someone else's narrative structure quite nice in training myself to write papers and the more experience you have with writing papers the less you need to have examples I find but especially at the beginning it's quite nice to see how a good well-written paper what it looks like so in general what you can do to uncover the structure of a well-written paper is to highlight the first sentence of each paragraph because usually the first sentence already shows what the entire paragraph is about and if a paper is written well with just these first sentences you can kind of see the entire narrative structure of that paper so once you have your example you can start writing down your own structure and I usually use the big document and just kind of start making a little map or a little mind map of how I want my argument to flow 
and this process can be quite daunting at least for me i think if you're a very if you're a more structured thinking this could perhaps be a little bit easier but some things that have definitely helped me is to almost present my argument as a presentation i've also made some powerpoints before to kind of show the narrative structure of the argument or i've written down the argument on a whiteboard as if i'm presenting it to an audience that hasn't heard this argument before and the more time you spend on your structure the easier the eventual writing process will be so i would say if you actually look at the entire timeline of writing down a paper this part maybe takes about 60 to 80 percent and the actually writing down of the words or the entire full paper is only between 20 and 40 percent so definitely spend a lot of time on structuring your argument so the last part of writing the paper is to kind of speed write a first draft or a first minimal viable product and the idea behind the speed writing is really that you try to write it down as fast as possible because i think people here can get stuck in over editing for example their own words but what you kind of want is to just have a first draft out such that you can show it to for example your professors and your colleagues and they can give you feedback on how your writing was done and what could be improved so some things that helped me during this process is to have pomodoro sessions for each little section of the paper so for example for the introduction discussion results i would have a dedicated session of pomodoros to help me kind of get through this process and then at the end of each writing session you usually have a first draft of every paragraph and usually during this time I do actually reconsider the argument that I've made and sometimes do a little bit of reverse outlining so the idea of reverse outlining is that you actually reconsider the skeleton or reconsider the narrative that you've constructed and I think if you're better at constructing skeletons and constructing an argument you don't have to do this but I find that that usually throughout the writing process I actually update how I think about the writing and what should be added to the writing so sometimes I have to reconsider my entire argument and reverse outlining for me works really well so the idea is again that you kind of highlight the first sentence of each paragraph and kind of see if it makes sense in the entire structure of your paper and if it doesn't to just move some of the paragraphs around or even delete some of the paragraphs and for me this is really the time that I feel that my paper starts taking shape and that it's almost in its final form. After this I revise the grammar and also the citation. So the grammar I use all the tools I have. So Grammarly, friends, uh, native speakers, anyone that can help me craft the argument. And for citations I of course use the reference manager. So I would make sure that my reference manager has correctly cited all the references that I need. And also that the style that I've selected is in compliance with the journal that I want to submit it to and I would definitely say that during this writing part or writing your first minimal viable product is to not get too attached to the paper already so you kind of want to have it in such a form that you can show it or have it be read by colleagues and your professor but not in a form that you cannot change it yet because usually when you first submit it or first show it to professors there's still a lot of editing that has to be done afterwards and you kind of need to consider that your paper is probably not in its final stage yet so you want to make sure that you don't get attached to your own argument and that you can actually still change it afterwards so this was kind of my writing process so in general a few other tips for if you're in a writer's block what really helps for me is a few minutes of rewriting so when I feel really stuck on a topic sometimes I just need to start writing about anything maybe not even related to the paper and through the flow of writing I can kind of get back into my own argument or kind of that space of writing another tip that I got from a writing course that I personally really liked was to keep a writing log and in this writing log you kind of write down what you think went well that day and what you think could be improved and through for me my writing log I really learned that some things work really well so for example if I said at uni in a special cubicle I noticed that I can write for quite long whereas when I write at home it actually doesn't work even though I believe for a long time that I could write at home quite well. So let me know down in the comments which kind of writing routines or tips and tricks work well for you. I'm always really curious to see how other people structure their writing and what kind of techniques they use. And if you're struggling with any part of the writing also let me know and perhaps I can discuss this in a next video.